Sports diplomacy has been a contentious issue in the world and in sports for several years. From the boycott of South Africa at the height of apartheid to the Saudi takeover of Newcastle United. And in MMA, this comes in the form of a controversial world leader who used the sport to further his own propaganda. Today, we look at the relationship between MMA and one of the world's most dangerous men, and how his continued involvement could one day threaten the UFC. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of the MMA warlord. In February 2007, Ramzan Kadyrov was appointed president of the Chechen Republic following the passing of his father Ahmad from an assassination attempt. Formed in the fallout of the Soviet Union, Chechnya is a subordinate republic based in southern Russia. The primarily Muslim region has been war-torn since its inception, originally looking to seek independence until 1999, when Russian President Vladimir Putin established direct rule of the region and appointed Ahmad as its first head of state. After taking the reins from his father, Kadyrov has been keen to use sport as a propaganda tool, inviting stars such as Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather, and Mo Salah with the aim of buffing his image as a strong man leader at home and abroad. Of all the disciplines, however, it was MMA where Kadyrov would find the most impact. In 2014, Kadyrov founded the Ahmad MMA Fight Club, a state-of-the-art training facility owned and funded by the Chechnyan government and a central figure of Kadyrov's propaganda, along with its sister MMA promotion, Absolute Championship Ahmad. It didn't take long for the camp to garner global interest. In 2015, Abdul Karim Edilov became the first Ahmad trained fighter to sign for the UFC, scoring a second round finish of Boyan Mihailovic at Fight Night Rotterdam. It would be Edilov's only fight in the UFC, as the fighter forewent a promising career to serve as Kadyrov's chief of staff, eventually being deputy prime minister with a focus on youth policy and sports. The link to Ahmad and Kadyrov's inner circle are increasingly prevalent. The training facility is currently being operated by Abu Zayed Vismuradov, a military colonel who served in the Chechen wars alongside Kadyrov himself before being elevated to commander of Chechnya's special forces. It underlines Ahmad's true intention. While the camp's elite fighters could pursue careers overseas, the rest, including several ACA champions, serve as soldiers for Kadyrov's personal army, including many of them in the ongoing war in Ukraine. The Chechnya people, however, remain unaware of this intention. The glossy propaganda and promise of its expensive cars and other ostentatious goods creating a dangerous production line of unaware militants. He is the blueprint for what Kadyrov wants all of Chechens to be. The perfect embodiment of a Chechen fighter. Because he's an active duty soldier. Because he's an active duty soldier who is also a champion. He is literally fulfilling everything Kadyrov could possibly request of him. What makes the production line even more concerning is how early it starts. In 2016, a series of ACA fights were broadcast on Russian television, which featured bouts between children as young as eight years old, with one fight ending by knockout. Fedor Emelianenko, then head of the Russian MMA Federation, was one of the highest profile critics, describing the event as inexcusable and condemning Kadyrov for encouraging his own children to take part in the contest. Only a week after verbalizing his criticisms, Fedor's daughter Maria was hospitalized after being attacked on her way from school. While no direct connection was made between Kadyrov and the attack, the dictator posting on social media that Fedor had realized his mistake. It was the first of many examples of human rights abuses undertaken by Kadyrov. In April 2017, Kadyrov endorsed the purge of several hundred men detained on suspicion of being gay or bisexual, with what eyewitnesses describe as imprisonment, torture, and extrajudicial murder. The news, however, did not gain traction in the MMA community. Coming at the same time, one of Kadyrov's fighters, unbeaten Magomed Bibulatov, made his UFC debut at UFC 210. In July 2017, CBS became the first American broadcaster to secure an interview with Kadyrov, where the leader gave a dismissive response to accusations of the purge. Подальше от нас. 
чтобы очистили кровь, там, если есть таких, пусть забирают. Kadyrov was also implicated in the abduction and murder of Natalia Estemirova, a human rights activist who had been investigating the alleged abuses by government-backed militias in Chechnya, as well as the torture of several journalists and bloggers critical of his regime. In 2017, the United States imposed sanctions under the Magnitsky Act on Kadyrov, accusing him of personal involvement in repression, torture, and murder, sanctions which were further increased following the abuse of civilians during the COVID-19 pandemic. The UFC often turned a blind eye to Kadyrov, allowing the leader to attend events in Russia and Abu Dhabi while still signing Ahmad-trained fighters. This also extended to the fighters themselves. In 2015, then-UFC champion Fabrizio Verdum accepted a role as an ambassador for Ahmad. Verdum's responsibilities included regular visits to Chechnya, training the dictator's chosen fighters, and promoting the club on social media and at UFC events. The deal was arranged by Ali Abdelaziz, a former FBI informant who works as the manager for several Ahmad-trained fighters, and would later arrange similar roles for Kamaru Usman, Justin Gaethje, and Henry Cejudo. That trio's connection to Kadyrov, however, was nothing compared to Hamzat Chimaev. Following his breakout year in 2020, Kadyrov became enamored with the Chechnyan-born Swede, whose reckless style and abrasive personality fit Kadyrov's hyper-macho ideology. Since then, Chimaev has become the poster child of Kadyrov's regime, being featured extensively in his propaganda and serving as a glorified babysitter for his two sons. The fighter happy to play along in return for a substantial reward. Having once been one of the most active fighters in the UFC, Chimaev hasn't competed in over a year, with many blaming visa issues due to his relationship with Kadyrov. Despite this, the UFC continued to keep its head in the sand and turn a blind eye to Kadyrov and his associated fighters, taking the stance that as long as a fighter's connections didn't directly impact the UFC, they were free to say or do what they liked outside the cage. The question became, what happened when they did? At UFC 282, Ahmad fighter Magomed Ankalaev took on Jan Blachowicz for the vacant light heavyweight title. After three tepid rounds highlighted by Blachowicz's leg kicks, Ankalaev took control at the start of the fourth round, neutralizing Blachowicz on the ground, including a one-sided showcase in the final round. Most believed Ankalaev had done enough to bring the title back to Chechnya. Unfortunately for the Russian, those people weren't sitting cage side. And Saudi Amato scores the contest. 47, 47, ladies and gentlemen, this contest is declared a split draw. Kadyrov was one of the fight's most vocal critics, accusing White of playing politics by not letting Ankalaev win and demanding the UFC boss change the result. Ankalaev was similarly bitter, stating he felt he deserved the win and even suggested he would leave the company if his issues with judging weren't addressed. At the time of recording, Ankalaev has not fought in the UFC since. Kadyrov caught the MMA headlines again a few weeks later, when former UFC fighter Edilov was found dead at the age of 31. While the fighter's cause of death was ruled as an accident, reports suggested the fighter had fallen out of favor with the dictator. No longer appearing on Kadyrov's video montages and absent from training sessions with Kadyrov's children, the same role currently held by Chimaev at the time of writing. While sports washing and dark dollars have increasingly grown prevalent in the world of sport, Kadyrov's involvement in MMA may be the most concerning, due to the brazen way the dictator has used the sport to fuel his ideology and the unwillingness of the UFC to address the elephant in its room. The Kadyrov-shaped cloud will continue to hang over the promotion until his relationship with the sport ends. Hopefully other promotions will take note and not associate themselves with other contentious powers. Yeah, this is going to be awkward. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss a video.